بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ہیز اے پرابلم دس پرابلم پرٹینس ٹو پروجیکٹائل موشن سو لیٹ می رائٹ دی پرابلم دین وی ول ڈسکس دی سولوشن together so the problem goes like this a soccer player kicks a ball at an angle of 36 degree from the horizontal with an initial speed of 15.5 meter per second assuming that the ball moves in a vertical plane find party the time t1 at which the ball reaches the highest point of its trajectory then part b its maximum height part c its range and time of flight and part d its velocity when it strikes the ground this is today's problem a soccer player kicks a ball at an angle of 36 degree from the horizontal with an initial speed of 15.5 meter per second assuming that the ball moves in a vertical plane find the time t1 at which the ball reaches the highest point of its trajectory part b its maximum height part c its range and time of flight and part d its velocity when it strikes the ground so before going to the solution i want to refresh your memory with regard to the projectile motion and its equations of motion 
as you might be aware that projectile is by definition a particle thrown obliquely into the air obliquely into the air this is the definition of a projectile and when it is thrown obliquely into the air it undergoes projectile motion which is a two dimensional motion a two dimensional motion with constant acceleration remember in case of projectile motion the acceleration is a vector its magnitude and direction both are constant in time its magnitude is equal to acceleration due to gravity and its direction is always downward right so this motion takes place in a plane we assume that is the xy plane so let me give you a figure so we assume the motion takes place in xy plane let this be origin and when we throw this projectile what happens it goes along a path which is parabolic in shape this is parabolic path of the projectile now if we assume it from the origin itself then x not and y not both are zero that means x and y coordinate at t is equal to zero is zero if we throw it from the origin itself so when we throw this particle with certain initial velocity vector v naught making certain angle phi naught with the horizontal it moves under the action of gravity remember let me draw it clearly we have earth here so it's pulled by earth downward so acceleration produced in the projectile is due to gravitational pull of the earth now we have equations of motion pertaining to the projectile Since it is two dimensional motion, we are having two position equations, one for x, one for y, and two velocity equations. So equations are Vx is equal to V naught cos phi naught, where Vx is x velocity at any time. You can see v naught cos phi naught is the initial x velocity so the horizontal velocity component retains its initial value throughout the flight let me name it equation one v y y velocity at any time for this projectile is v naught sine phi naught minus g t G is acceleration due to gravity. Phi naught is the angle with which we project it at is equal to zero. V naught is the magnitude of initial velocity vector, which is initial speed. So y velocity changes with time. X velocity doesn't change because acceleration along x direction is zero and acceleration along y direction is minus g. Now the 
position equations are one is x is equal to v naught cos phi naught t and equation for y coordinate is y equal to v naught sine phi naught t minus half gt square let me name this three this is my four x is v naught cos phi naught t y is v naught sine phi naught t minus half gt square now these equations one two three four are called equations of motion of projectile now remember we are assuming that x naught y naught both are zero that means we are throwing the projectile from the origin otherwise we have to add here x naught to x equation and y naught to the right hand side of y equation and velocity at any time can be found if we know the x and y velocity at particular that particular time. Now let us move to the solution. Part A. Part A asks us to solve for the time t1 at which the ball reaches the highest point of its trajectory. Now at highest point, the vertical component of velocity vy is zero. Now using vy uh, or let me first give you the equation form which we can find the time at which the ball reaches the maximum uh, point of its trajectory that is my this equation for vy velocity so let us use this equation and solve for t using two using equation two and solving for t we use this equation and solve for t we get we get t is v naught sine phi naught minus vy over g from 2 t is vy minus v naught sign sorry v uh, we are solving for t so t is v naught sine phi naught minus v y over g right as we said v y is zero so let us put the numbers v y is zero what is initial velocity that is given 15.5 meter per second. Phi naught is given the angle at which it is projected 36 degree. And we know G is acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square near the surface of Earth. Therefore, we have we have T1, we call this time as T1 in accordance with the question T1, the time at which ball reaches the highest point of the 
its trajectory. So it is P1 equal, let's put the numbers, 15.5 meter per second times sine of 36 degrees, Vy is zero. And downstairs we have 9.8 per second square. When we solve it, it turns out to be 0.93 second. So this is the time at which this ball reaches highest point of its trajectory. This time is called time of ascent. Time of ascent. As always, check the calculation at home. Let us move to the part B. Let me use this color. As you can see, part B. asks us to find maximum height. The maximum height is simply the y coordinate attained by the ball when time is time of ascent. That's T1. So let us solve. The maximum height is reached at t equal to 0 0.93 second, whichever time of ascent, t1. So using which equation? Equation for y, what is the that's equation four, this one. Using equation four, we have, we have to solve for y when t is this much, 0.93 second. So what's our y now? V naught, sine phi naught t minus half g t square, which is our equation four, this one. Now we will put the numbers. And the, when t is time of ascent, y is y max. Now the y max is the maximum height when we put t equal time of ascent. It is 15.5 meter per second times sine of 36 degrees times t, which is 0.93 second minus half g 9.8 meter per second square times t square, our t is 0.93 second square. 15.5 meter per second times sine of 36 degrees times 0 0.93 second, which is time of ascent minus half g time of ascent square. When we solve it, it turns out to be five, four, sorry, 4.2 meters. So maximum height is 4.2 meter. Check the calculation. Check the calculation at home. So this is our part B. Let us move to part C. Skip the page. 
So let me move to now part C. In part C, we have to solve for the range. Range, what's range? This distance is range. That is the horizontal distance traveled by the projectile when it retains its original initial y coordinate or initial height, that is the range, right? And the time it takes to travel this much horizontal distance is called the time of flight. So part C tells us to find range and time of flight. So let us do that. Now the range R can be obtained from in which equation from R equal V not square by T sine to find out. This is the expression for the range of the projectile, which we are discussing, which is thrown in this fashion as this soccer ball. This is the formula for range. V not square by G sine to phi naught. We have not derived it, but you can find it using the X equation. It is simple. Uh, you can say range is the X coordinate attained when T is time of flight. This time required for the projectile to come back to its initial level is called time of flight. And you, you will see that time of flight is twice time of ascent because time of ascent is equal to time of descent. So if you put here t equal time of flight, that is double time of ascent, then the x is your r and that turns out to be v naught square by g sine to phi naught. So let us put the numbers. It is 15.5 meter per second square over G 9.8 meter per second square times sine to phi naught, which is sine 72 degree because our phi naught is 36 degrees. That is 15.5 meter per second square over 9.8 meter per second square times sine 72 degree. When we solve it, it turns out to be 23.3 meters. So this is the range. Check the calculation, 23.3 meters, right? Now we have to find now time of flight. What we can do, you can see, at t is equal to zero, y is zero, I can say, Time of flight is that t when y again becomes zero. So in equation four, if I put y equal to zero and solve for t, that's my time of flight, right? So let us do that. We set y equal to zero in equation four. My equation four is this y equation and find the time t2 at which 
the wall returns to the ground and we do that but we obtain we obtain t2 is twice v naught sine phi naught by g you can check it at your places let us put the numbers that is 2 times 15.5 meter per second times sine of 36 degrees over 9.8 meter per second square 2 times 15.5 meter per second times sine 36 degrees over 9.8 meter per second square it turns out to be 1.86 second so it's my time of flight right you can see it is double the time of ascent which was uh, v naught sine phi naught by g when we put v y zero it is double that so t2 is twice t1 time of flight is double the time of ascent which must occur because the same time is required for the ball to go up and reach its maximum height and from maximum height to ground as it uh, uh, as is required for the ball to come down from maximum height to ground right i repeat t2 is twice t1 which must occur because the same time is required for the ball to go up reach its maximum height from the ground as is required for the ball to come down reach the ground from its maximum height so we have done three parts we have done we have solved for time of ascent we have solved for maximum height we have solved for its range and time of flight now we have to uh, solve for its velocity when it strikes the ground so let us move to the part D. Now to find the velocity of the ball when it strikes the ground, what we do, we first obtain Vx. And remember, Vx is constant, horizontal velocity doesn't change. It is same at all times. What's Vx? Vx is V0 cos phi naught, which is 15.5 meter per second times the uh, cos of 36 degrees. When we solve it, it turns out to be 12.5 meter per second. So the x velocity at all times is 12.5 meter per second, right? Now we have to find by, but when, when ball strikes the ground, when ball strikes the ground, time is time of flight, which is t2, right? From figure, you can see when ball strikes the ground here, our projectile is ball. When it strikes the ground, time is time of flight, which is T2. So we have to use this equation to solve for V by when T is time of flight, which is T2, which we have solved for 1.86 second. That will be Vy when ball strikes the ground. So Vy is therefore V naught sine phi naught minus gt. But 
और T is T2 time of flight. Let me put the numbers. It is 15.5 meter per second times uh, sine of 36 degrees minus GT, which is 9.8 meter per second square times T, which is T2, which is 1.86 second. Check it. V naught sine phi naught minus GT, T is time of flight. 15.5 meter per second times sine 36 degree minus 9.8 meter per second to the square times 1.86 second. When we solve it, it turns out to be negative. Minus 9.1 meter per second. Check the calculation. So we have solved for X and Y component velocities, uh, velocity components of the body when it strikes the ground. So we can find the magnitude of velocity, that is speed, when ball strikes the ground from V is equal to V square plus V Y square. What is it? Speed of the ball when it strikes the ground. Let us put the numbers. Our Vx is 12.5 meter per second whole square. Our Vy is minus 9.1 meter per second square whole thing in root. When we solve it, it turns out to be 15.5 meter per second. Check the calculation. 12.5 meter per second square plus minus 9.1 meter per second square, whole thing in the root is 15.5 meter per second. And to find the direction of the velocity vector when it strikes the ground, we can use this formula tan phi is Vy minus Vx, which is minus 9.1 over 12.5. When we solve for phi, it turns out to be minus 36 degrees. What is the meaning of that? Minus 36 degree means 36 degrees clockwise from the x-axis. Clockwise from the X axis. Check the calculations at home. That means when ball strikes here, its velocity vector, of course, will be uh, tangent to the path. This angle, that is this angle, clockwise from the X axis, this angle is. 36 degree and speed here is 15.5 meter per square. You can see the speed at which ball is projected from the ground is same as the speed acquired by the ball when it hits the ground. Both are 15.5 meter per square and the angle at which it is projected was 36 degree. The angle at which it strikes the ground is only also 36 degree. But here this 36 degree is measured from the x-axis in counterclockwise sense. This is 36 degree. Here it is measured from the x-axis in clockwise sense. Right? So speed at the projection is same as the speed when the ball strikes the ground. Think about this at your places, check all the calculations, 
don't waste your time. I hope you are enjoying these problems. Make a notebook of it. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel. You can give comment in the comment box. Thank you. God bless you. Assalamu alaikum.